Mini episode 1511 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello and welcome to FDH Lounge Mini Episode 1511, our review of the big summer hit The Old Man on FX and Hulu. I'm FDH Managing Partner Rick Morris here with our top five notes of interest about Season 1. Number five, The Old Man features the hunt for Dan Chase, a former CIA operative who went into hiding after a mysterious event in Afghanistan in the late 1980s while he was working with the resistance to the Soviet occupiers. Played by Jeff Bridges in an incredible role, the widowed Dan is forced on the run after being stalked by assassins in the employ of a mysterious old enemy, and in his adventures, he proves to be far more than what initially meets the eye. Dan's late wife had been the wife of an Afghan warlord that Dan was working with, and she and Dan had a daughter who worries about her father from afar. When she grew up and moved out, they started communicating by burner phones only. While on the run, Dan befriends a divorcee named Zoe McDonald, played by Amy Brenneman, who initially becomes a captive when Dan is smoked out and later she becomes a willing accomplice. The FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence, Harold Harper, played to perfection by John Lithgow, is assigned to bring Dan to custody since the two worked together in Afghanistan back in the day. His assistant and beloved protege, Angela Adams, becomes ensnared in the case in ways greatly unforeseen. Number four, the number of locales involved in the show go far, far beyond what looks at first to be a manhunt throughout rural America. Part of this stems from the fact that Dan had been poking his head up over the years, maintaining some business interests that financed his family life and his daughter's education, and the contacts that he has made in a variety of ways manifest themselves in his life on the run. Number three, the motives of various officials come into question as double crosses and potentially even triple crosses loom all around. Dan's case turns out to be incredibly complicated, and string pullers throughout law enforcement and the spy world are all pursuing their own interests. Number two, Flashbacks to Dan's final days in Afghanistan are sprinkled throughout the season. Dan, his future wife, and the warlord that she was still married to are shown in many tense scenes. Also, scenes with Dan, his wife, and their daughter back in America are shown as well, fleshing out the various issues with the characters that manifest themselves in the present situation. Number one. Dan's daughter Emily turns out to be way more important to the resolution of this case than anyone would believe at the outset. There are not one but two major developments concerning her that turn out to be crucial to absolutely everyone on the canvas. Each one makes the case far more personal for different people. These twists are emblematic of the season as a whole, which does not proceed the way you think it might from the commercials and the pilot. Various developments over the course of 35 years, most thought to be long hidden, come to the fore with a vengeance. The twists and turns of this story, along with lots of great action, make it a very fun program to watch. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.